is Joe Chad, baby. How you doing, my man? You doing all right? What's up, Pigo? I'm doing a little better. Good to see you. You feeling better? You feeling better? You feeling energetic? A bit, yeah, it's got a little cough I can't shake. <clears throat> but uh, uh, getting better every day. All right. Well, colds can stick with you, bro. Uh, did you see uh, to a stick this uh, 70 yard throw, by the way? <laughs> did you see that? Uh, yeah, I am glad. I'm glad to see that Tua Tungavaloa continues to work very hard with his trainer, Nick Hicks, and receiver Lynn Bowden uh, on strengthening his arm. I think that that is very good news. Or is it strengthening his arm? Or is it that his body is maybe fully healing too? Like last year kind of was you know maybe you were probably at 85 percent or something but maybe now this year and this off season you can really build on that body and get it back to maybe normal now maybe maybe we weren't seeing two at a hundred percent over the last two years what do you think about that yeah i mean there's every reason to believe that his body will be uh you know stronger and more healed in year three Obviously, nobody wanted it to take this long to get to this point. Um, but, you know, look, I'm no quarterback coach. I'm no uh, quarterback guru. But it did seem at times Tua Tungavaloa's mechanics were off, uh, especially when throwing on the run. You know, he skipped some passes. Uh, when he So it's one thing for Tua to throw an accurate – a ball when he's stepping into it and he's not under pressure. The true test, of course, will come. Uh, and no matter how many offensive linemen the Dolphins sign, the true test will come when he's forced to make difficult off-platform, uh, you know, varied angle, challenging throws. You know, can he get enough on those balls? Because uh, obviously he he can stand in the pocket and step into a 50-yard a throw to a Cedric Wilson on a post. And I hope that that happens, and I look forward to it. And I think that if the Dolphins establish a running game and a more legitimate threat in the play-action game, that Tua will have the opportunity to step into a few of those 50-yard post throws that we didn't see enough of last year. All right, Cedric Wilson. Uh, we had uh, Ian Rappaport on. And he mentioned that they told him that they were going to use him all over the place. So, you know, we were looking at Chase Edmonds, maybe playing a little bit of a Debo Samuels type role. It looks like maybe now it might be two different players that Mike McDaniel is scheming to use Debo Samuels style. Yeah. And Lynn Bowden uh, can do both. Lynn Bowden has been a quarterback in college he has been a receiver in the National Football League. He has been tried at running back in the National Football League. I'm not suggesting that the Dolphins should put tons of chips on Lynn, Lynn Bowden, but he is an, an excellent athlete. And so, look, it's going to be an obvious storyline, an easy thing for Dolphins reporters and fans to, to write about and ask about you know, who's the next Debo Samuel. And, and I get it. But I think, in general, we need to keep in mind that Mike McDaniel – is a, a very intelligent, creative guy. And so he's going to find lots of different ways to utilize these chess pieces. And I think that I have more confidence in Mike McDaniel uh, in, in putting together an offensive scheme with an identity. When I sat down with Mike McDaniel, Hal Habib and I sat down with Mike McDaniel, and I never did that with Brian Flores, not once. So we sat down with Mike McDaniel. Shocker. Was, Shocker. He's so sociable. I mean, Mike it's... McDaniel was, was gracious. He was charming. He was witty. He was smart. Uh, I'm just being, I'm telling you my impression. Okay. Felt very know, good I, about this meeting. I, I know. It's just funny. The shit you guys had to put up with, with Flo. And now you actually get like a real human being. It's just funny. Cause it's just great for you guys. Great for us now, because now you're going to give us better stories because these people are actually going to talk to you. You know what I mean? It's just it's just so weird to go from that whole, you know, way they ran their... Well, shifting know. the focus to McDaniel, and, and I understand your point, but shifting the focus to McDaniel, the first thing that he said in that meeting that jumped out to me, 
And I turned to Hal and I said, Hal, if you don't write about this, I'm going to write about this. And that was that he said, we will have an identity. We will figure out what we do best and we will master that. And that it goes completely against everything that the previous staff believed. And I told Mike, I said, I am so happy to hear this because every time I and other journalists brought it up, we were told we were idiots, basically, that that's a dumb idea, that identity means nothing. No, of so, course not. Yeah, it means so nothing. establish a run, um, uh, you know, um, versatility in terms of moving pieces around. The Dolphins tried all that pre-snap movements, pre movement stuff last year, but the 49ers were number one in the NFL in it. So they're, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to and we're going to get well, remember, a little extra part, part practice. Of that, part of that, Joe, in order for you to be really good at movement like that, you also have to be penalty free. You also have to be a very smart team because when there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of responsibilities and you have to remember. And the timing has to be right so you don't cross in front of the freaking center and get hit by the snap. You get my drift? So when you're moving things around like this, you have to be well coached, you know, this, and there's nothing new to this. This is Tom Landry. This is Hank Stram. This is stuff that went on all the way back in the 60s in the AFL. They're not reinventing the wheel. There's been movement. They created it. Those people invented what Mike McDaniel and Shanahan and Bill Walsh and everybody else has been doing for years. They all copied the Strams and the, and the Landrys of the world with all of that stuff. You know, do you remember when the Cowboys used to stand up and go back down again as a line? Do you know why they used to do that? Do you know why? It's the main uh, reason why the line, the line would stand up in the middle of a snap count and then go back down again. Do you know why? Does it have some, does it have something to do with timing? It has to do with the offense. Why Hank Stram and Tom Landry wanted to do that was because when you stand, it allowed movement in the back. Linebackers could not see that movement. And so when the guys went back down, they had to readjust. While you're readjusting and trying to find where your guy is at, ball snapped. I got you off your spot. And now my guy has a half step or two steps in front of you. That's part of movement. But part of that movement, you've got to execute off that movement. And if you noticed, you saw that film that was going around of um, of um, damn it, uh, what's the name of the dude with the with the finger this way? Uh, what's his name? A Baldinger that he did of, of Mike McDaniel, and you noticed all the movement and how McDaniel designs plays where the movement already takes the defenders out of a play, and that's exactly what I was telling you. Hank Stram thought about this back in the '60s. Mike McDaniel's still using this in the 2020s. Yeah, having so a smarter a having a smarter offensive plan is certainly going to be helpful to the Dolphins in 2022. And I trust Mike McDaniel and his evaluation. Now I know that Chris Greer is the player who is landing is the is the player for the Dolphins who is landing these players, such as Chase Edmonds and Cedric Wilson, who are not known quantities, they're not star players, they're not Pro Bowl players. But if Mike McDaniel and Wes Welker and John Embry and these guys are getting together and saying, you know, hey, these players fit what we do, uh, then I, I, I trust that they know exactly what they're looking for. And that's why I think those players are going to, uh, you know, flourish in this system. Cedric Wilson's an interesting guy. You mentioned him earlier. You know, not a burner. The Dolphins have a lot of these 4-4 guys. Wilson's like a 4 five five guy but he's crafty and nifty and finds ways to get open and uh t t finds ways to get yards after catch so obviously uh, mike mcdaniel who has been a receivers coach uh and who has helped guys like pierre garçon have career years uh you know really identified cedric wilson as a guy who may be a little under the radar but can do some things differently than the skill sets of the receivers that the Dolphins have. By the way, they brought back Preston Williams, and not at the restricted free agent number, but and I know some people well, he's, are like basically Man. he's got to make basically he's got to make the team to make that salary. It's really not it's really not a big deal. Yeah, because, Preston wanted to stay. Preston yeah. wanted to stay, 
And but you know, I, I think it's a worthwhile flyer. I think that Mike McDaniel and Wes Welker look at those highlights in from practice and in the games and think, my gosh, you know, the phrase we're going to hear a lot is unlocked. Chris Greer talked about how he believes it that is Mike true. McDaniel. Chris it Greer talked about how Mike McDaniel and um, the new offensive coordinator and the new offensive line coach that they believe that they can unlock the talents of some of these offensive linemen. Well, it's sort of a similar, and, and Mike has said that about Tua. And so it's sort of the same thing with Preston. It's like, you know, maybe a fresh start, a clean slate. Maybe they can kind of get through to Preston. Uh, not, not banking on it, but it's a worthwhile flyer. By the way, you're not going for any of this silly shit that you think like Bridgewater is going to be pushing anybody. Like he's here to be a backup, period. Right? No, I you're understand that, that. No, I understand that that's the plan. And we'll see how things play out. Obviously, Bridgewater is a better backup uh, than Jacoby Great Brissett. Great backup. Yeah, he's one of the best backup quarterbacks in the National Football League. And and listen, if if Tua were to get hurt and Teddy Bridgewater were to win three or four games in a row and complete 10 touchdowns with one interception, no pun intended, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And yeah. that would not be a bad problem to have. If at some point there is some drama and controversy because in relief Teddy Bridgewater is exceptional, then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Something he's never been in his entire career. Exceptional. But somehow or another, you drew up it, the, 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 the situation that he would be exceptional. But let's see. He's going to do something he's never done before. Okay. All right. Well, well, well he and well, Tua are number five and number six among active NFL quarterbacks in completion percentage. And Bridgewater's career passer rating is way higher than you would ever imagine. So let's not shortchange Teddy Bridgewater. This is a, a well, you know why quality. it is, right? He can't take this any a, chances. Listen, the Steelers are rolling with Mitch Trubisky. Who do you have more confidence in? Mitch Trubisky, Teddy Bridgewater, right? I mean neither one. Neither one, Joe. I'm not neither suggesting one. that you would necessarily want either one to be your opening day quarterback. Neither but one. you can make the quarter. argument that Bridgewater is would outperform Trubisky. Trubisky with a little bit of a higher ceiling. That's the I thing have, about Bridgewater. I, the problem I have with Trubisky, I mean, with uh, with Bridgewater and people in general, is that most people don't watch him, and because they like him, because he's such a great kid, they kind of give him the benefit of the doubt, but they don't really look at it. He started in 2014, an entire season. 14 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. And 15, 14 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. In 2020, 15 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. This is a player that has never been explosive because he doesn't have an explosive bone in his body. He doesn't have the arm to go downfield. He doesn't have the athleticism to buy you more time. So he's a conservative player, and he takes high percentage passes because he's really, really smart. He's not going to make the stupid mistake. He won't get you in trouble, but he'll never be the well, different. Kind of like Jacoby Brissett. I mean, to be honest, the Dolphins have had a bunch of quarterbacks. No, he's He's better than Jacoby in the decision-making process. He understands his limitations. What I'm saying is both guys have Jacoby the reputation of being checked down Charlies. Right, yes, yes, yes. And the Dolphins have had a slew of quarterbacks here, including Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua Tungvaloa, who are not noted for their arm strength. Right. And yet sure. it is interesting that Ryan Fitzpatrick's mindset, he would say, I don't have a very strong arm, but I know where to take my shot. And so By the way, we're, uh, we're on the same page in hoping that Tua Tungavaloa takes more shots in 2022. I think he will, and I predict that we will be writing about how Tua Tungavaloa has improved in the deep passing game. I have no, I, I'm, I have no concerns about that at all. I just need him to get a line in a running game and coaching, and he'll well, be. We need fine. a tackle. He just doesn't have any of that. That's the. That's what we'll wrap it up with. Ian Rappaport feels it's all up to Watson now. So Armstead's waiting for Watson. So as a Dolphins fan, it sounds like we're hoping Watson goes to Atlanta, Cleveland, and he doesn't go to New Orleans because if he goes to New Orleans, Armstead stays there, and then all the other tackles will make their decisions yeah. after that. 
But I think if you're the Miami Dolphins, I don't know what you're hearing, Joe. You want maybe Armstead to go. Uh, you want Watson to go somewhere else than yeah. New Orleans, so that way you have a legitimate shot at getting Armstead. Your thoughts? Armstead on that? is uh, thirty point six years old, thirty and a half, according to uh, to uh, Spo Spotrac. <laughs> now, listen. In general, the Dolphins have steered away from these thirty plus year olds, but if Armstead stays in New Orleans, which a lot of people think he very well might, you need to pivot to a 36-year-old Dwayne Brown, a 31-year-old Eric Fisher. It needs to be a short-term deal. Uh, a 31-year-old J.C. Treader, a center who's become available, um, you need to be ready to pivot quickly. Um, the time has come for the Dolphins to, to say, you know what, it's kind of like when – Major League Baseball teams sign 31-year-old pitchers or 33-year-old outfielders to eight-year contracts, and you just know at the end of those contracts it's going to look like a bad deal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And in the NFL, you get a break because the money on the back end is often not guaranteed. So front load the deal, whatever it takes to get it done. The, and Chris Greer must know that he cannot – allow all of these guys to go elsewhere. It, 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 he owes it to the Dolphins fan base. He owes it to Tua Tonga Valoa. He owes it to head coach Mike McDaniel to secure a solid, capable, veteran, proven tackle. It'll be a colossal disaster if he does not. They cannot go into the season banking on Austin Jackson, Liam Eikenberg, et cetera, at tackle. At left tackle, if you want to say Eichenberg's your right tackle and we'll bring in somebody lower tier to compete with them, that's fine. They need a capable, solid, veteran left tackle. Follow him on Twitter at Shad Joe. More importantly, please subscribe to the Palm Beach Post like I do and many others and support our local journalist and catch him twice a week here with our American Dream Lending.com Miami Dolphins report. Joe. Thank you for taking some time. We will catch up later in the week, my friend. Appreciate you. Good to see you, buddy. All right. You got it. There you go. The great Joe Shad. Joining when you. Have this is the